wondering if, uh, if any of you suffer with forgetfulness. <laughs> Raise your hand if you are forgetful. Now see, as you look around, those that are over age 40 that aren't raising their hand, they're worse off than us because they don't even remember how forgetful they are. I went in Office Depot yesterday and uh, I was looking, at, actually the, the church authorized me to, to get a desk for the office and I was out doing some shopping and we needed a table for the hallway, so I was just out looking and uh, um, as, I, as I went in, there was a man and I I saw him, he was normal looking, he was by the doors, and he kind of waved at me as I went to park, and I thought, man, I'm forgetful. I hope I'm not supposed to know this guy. And uh, so I park, and I get out, and he's walking to me, and I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm supposed to know him, and I have no clue who that is. The awesome part of this is that man walked up to me, he didn't know me, but he asked me, was there anything he could pray for me about? Well, I should have said right then, would you pray for my forgetfulness? But instead, I said, no, sir, but can I pray for you? And so I, I prayed with, with him, and, and I went inside, and I was distracted by that. And I thought, wow, you know, was, was that an angel? And I thought, you know, it was. An angel is simply God's messenger. And it spoke to my heart that, that someone was out doing what God calls us to do and, and being the church, that he was willing to step out of his comfort zone and talk to a total stranger and, and stand outside a, a, a commercial business and just pray for people as they came by. You know, how awesome was that? But as I thought about all that, of course, I became a little distracted. And when I get distracted, I become forgetful. First, I go in the store, and I'm walking all around in circles, and I don't even remember why I'm there. I'm nowhere near the, the furniture. So I window shot for a few minutes. Then I get over by the furniture. I, I looked at some particular desk, and I had to lay my keys down to do the, the math. I didn't take my shoes off, but to, to see uh, how much the, the stuff would cost that I would be getting it all. And then I get over by the door, and I start looking for my keys. Where are my keys? And then I thought, Man, that guy didn't take my keys when I was praying for him, did he? <laughs> and I was like, okay, I remember hearing the, the door lock, so I knew I had, I had locked the truck, so I didn't leave them in the truck. So then you got to do what you got to do. I start retracing my steps, and sure enough, over there at the desk I was looking at, there's my, my keys uh, laying on there, just plain as day. How embarrassing that would have been if someone else would have came along or someone, well, now you all know, uh, knows that I can't even keep up with my, my keys when I go out in public. But, you know, again, I, I saw by the show of hands, we all do that. Men, you guys sometimes, maybe, have you forgotten your, your wife's birthday, your anniversary? So y'all being real still, why do you have to bring that up? Uh, ladies, maybe you frustrated your husband before by, by leaving your purse. Maybe you left your purse... 70 miles back down the road at the last uh, restaurant you ate at. We all, uh, we all get forgetful sometimes. I forgot my parents' anniversary the other day. Uh, late in the evening, my dad called me for like the fifth time that day and said, okay, are you not going to tell me and your mama happy anniversary? And I said, is it today? And he said, yes. I said, happy anniversary. He said, okay, here, tell your mom. Puts my mom on the phone. So I told my mom happy anniversary, and I, I, I felt bad because I had uh, forgotten stuff. But again, we're, we're human. We, <laughs> we forget things. Even our, our young people, maybe you guys, sometimes maybe you forget your, your schoolwork. You really had good intentions, but you just really forgot to do it, or, or maybe you did it and, and, and you forgot to, to take it to school with you. Uh, we're all capable of forgetting uh, we're human. God knew that. God knew that we were, we were capable of forgetting. Uh, in the Old Testament, the, the word remember is, is used often. Uh, we saw that, that God wanted to remind the Israelites that they were once uh, slaves in Egypt and that he had freedom. And, and he tells them to remember that he rescued them and, and remember that he's the, the creator. He tells them to remember the, the days of their youth. He tells them to remember so much. He tells us to remember things. But one of the things that I remember from the Old Testament is that often God's people get distracted. And when God's people get distracted, they forget 
the Israelites, how often did, did they get distracted? And we saw God have to, to do things to, to get their attention when they didn't remember the things that he told them to remember. You know, Jesus himself gave us some, some things to remember. Today is uh, going to be a little different than our, our normal service. If you uh, are on the in the loop thing, um, you might have gotten a text yesterday that said we were going to observe the Lord's uh, Supper today. And so we're going to do that today. And, and as we do that, I, I really pray that this will, will not be a time that you just uh, go through one of the things that, that people do at church. I pray that today, maybe you've been here every week, or maybe you haven't been to, for the last six months, or maybe you haven't been to church in a long time, but I pray that today will be a day that you'll no longer be distracted. That today will be a day when you remember. That you remember the things that, that God's Word says that, that we are to remember. That you remember Jesus. There are a, a couple of things that that I want us to uh, talk about to remember. But before we go into that time, I, I'd like to have just a, a prayer time right now before we even talk about the things that we need to remember. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, Lord God, it is my prayer today, God, that we would remember. God, that we as your church, as a body of believers, as individuals, that we would remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. God, there's so much going on in our world. It's so, so easy to get off course and, and to get distracted. Lord, we don't want to play church today. God, we're not going to have a fancy sermon today. God, we want to remember you. Lord, in the midst of all that's going on, Lord, just block the world out right now. Speak to our hearts. God, we just ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we, we go into our, our, our time of observing the Lord's Supper today, there, there are just a uh, a couple of things that uh, I want to talk about before we do that. And again, not a, not a traditional time here today. The first one I want us to remember is this, this bread and, and this juice, this, this cup of, of juice, that those remind us of Christ's sacrifice for us. I pray that you're reminded today of the sacrifice that that Jesus did for us. And in Matthew 20, 28, the Bible says that the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. You see, that night when uh, the disciples joined Jesus in the, in the time that would be the, the Lord's Supper, the, the Last Supper, the disciples didn't really understand all that was going on, but they knew they were there in the, in the presence of Jesus, but Jesus knew what was going on. Again, we just read, the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. So these elements that, that we partake of today, they, they remind us of, of Christ's sacrifice for us. They remind us that, that Jesus gave himself willingly for us. Again, it's so easy for us to get caught up, get distracted. I'll be honest, I have trouble focusing on anything for more than 30 seconds, but today I pray that you'll remember the sacrifice that, that Jesus made for us. How wise was the person who said that it, it wasn't the nails that held Jesus on the cross. It was our sins and his will. You see, our sins placed him there, but his willingness kept him there. His willingness to sacrifice his self for you and I. Jesus died so that, so that we could live. The Lord's Supper is also a reminder of the love that Jesus had to have for us. 
in this time of sacrifice. The love that was expressed through what Jesus did, the love that God has for us. And most of you know, most of you here know that I have a I have a daughter. And I've said it from up here before. I love her so much. But I love her more than I love most of you. And if it comes down to, to sacrificing you or her, I'm going to sacrifice you. But see, that's because I, as much as I try to, to emulate and, and have the kind of love that, that God has for us, I, I can't be the same. But then in the same sense, I understand that those of us who have placed our faith in, in Jesus and what Jesus did at, at Calvary, that, that we are his children. So what he did was to save his children. But he sacrificed Jesus. What love that must have been. God said, I love my children. I love my daughter. My daughter's uh, at home sick. Tanya was sick last week. Now Kaylee's sick. I hope I'm here next week. But I would do anything for her. A small boy had consistently been late for supper mom and dad had said son you you, you got to do better you got to quit being late and he would try and he would just he'd still be late so one day he comes home and he's even later than he he normally had been and he comes in and he looks and his head's down he walks over he sits down at his table and and, and there his plate is and there's a, a slice of bread and a glass of water he looks over at mom and dad's plate and they're just filled with heaping mounds of food he just stares down at his plate. He's hungry. He's tired. And that's when his dad reaches over, takes his plate, and removes it and takes his plate and gives it to his child. Why did he do that? Because he loved his child. Even though in the midst of trying to, to teach his son a, a lesson of one part and, and of... of trying to punish his child. He saw an opportunity to show his child how much that he loved him. He couldn't stand the thought of his, of his child not eating anything but a piece of bread. This young man grew up and went on to say that I never had to wonder what God's love was like because my dad taught me. Folks, that's the way God loves us. That's the way Jesus loves us. Jesus took our plate. He took it upon himself. The Bible says the wages of sin is, is death, and, and that wage of sin is a total separation from God. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. So Jesus took the, the cross that we deserved. He took the death, the agony that we deserved. And it's my prayer today that you remember how much love he must have taken for him to do that. The last thing I want you to remember today is Jesus is coming back. Did you know that? Jesus is coming back. And as we remember Jesus' sacrifices, as we remember his love, I pray that you remember today also that there's a time that, that Jesus is coming back. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 11 that as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show the Lord's death till he come. You see, we, we have a, a hope. You see, I think one of the problems that as the church we walk around, can you imagine the, the hearts and the, and the feelings and the anxiety that the uh, disciples may have had after Jesus had been crucified b before they had seen a, a risen Savior? All their hopes, all their dreams were, well, they were shattered. Folks, we have a risen Savior, and we know that Jesus is alive and sits at the hand of the Father, amen? Amen. That is our hope. Jesus is coming again. He said that he would come again and he would take us unto himself. Oh, how I long for that day. Folks, that is our, 
our hope, we have to remember Jesus, his, his sacrifice, and that, that he's coming to get us again. That is our, our hope today when we think about yesterday in our, in our country, there were bombings again on our, on our home soil. There were people injured in, in New York, and I believe it was New Jersey, the other place where the bomb was designated, a place where a run for, for our military was to take place. I read also that there was a man who, who went in a mall yesterday and began stabbing people. And some of the news are reporting that he was asking people if they were Muslims or, or were they Christians, and he was, he was stabbing Christians. Right here in America. Folks, we don't have to, to let that put that feeling in our hearts like those disciples did the morning after Jesus was crucified. Because Jesus lives. And he's coming again. He's coming again. I, I sat with a, a family yesterday at the hospital who lost a loved one. Some of you who went to South Haven High School, maybe you know Jason Hawkins. Jason passed away yesterday. His dad was a uh, police officer, one of our retired captains who uh, worked with for many years. And that family was, was hurting. And you know, I struggled at first in how I was to comfort him. You know, God puts you in those positions sometimes and for a moment sometimes until we start to listen to the Spirit and I thought I was supposed to be doing something. We get a little... We get a little weak. But then I heard someone comforting his daughter and talking about her faith in Christ. And then I began to, to look, and she had a bracelet on that talked about put on the full armor of God. And then I heard them say something about Jason's relationship with Christ and that he too was a Christian. Then I knew how to comfort that family. Oh, they're going to hurt and, and they're going to grieve. But they have hope. They have hope in, in God's promises and they have hope in the, in the fact that whether it be that they pass from this life on to eternity or whether it be that, as we're talking about today, that Jesus is going to come back. They had hope and they had a, a peace and they were able to, to leave that place with a with a peace. We talked about how one day that because of what Jesus did, because of the love and the sacrifice that he had, and because we know he's coming for us again, that they too will get to see Jason again. And all their family that had put their faith in, in Christ before that, they're going to they're gonna get to spend eternity with him. And they're going to get to spend eternity with Jesus. I pray you remember that today. Remember that. As we prepare now to go into a time of observing the, the Lord's Supper, I invite everyone here today that uh, is a believer in Jesus Christ and has put your faith in, in Jesus to participate in, in what we're doing. It doesn't matter if you're a member or not a member. If you've been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, then you have just as much right to this as anyone here. So I pray that you will take part in this. But as we do this and as we prepare for this, we must be reminded that this is something that is to be done with, with reverence, reverence and self-examination. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 11, 27 and 28, Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But a man must examine himself, and in so doing he is to eat the bread and drink of the cup. This morning I pray that if you got the message yesterday or you knew ahead of time that you were reminded that we were going to be doing this, that, that you took some time without distraction to, to be able to examine yourself. And if you didn't and you've come here today not knowing we were going we to do this, we're going to take just a, a couple of moments and we're going to do what, what God's 
word tells us to do, and we're going to examine ourselves. We're going to examine ourselves to see if there's, there's sin in our, in our lives, sin that we know about that we've not done anything about, or, or maybe there's sin that God needs to reveal to us that, that we need to take care of. And then we need to confess those sins to God, and we need to repent of those sins and accept God's forgiveness. So right now where you are, I want to take just a, just a couple of minutes. We're going to have a silent time. And then after that, I'll, I'll pray and close this out. And then we'll prepare to partake of the Lord's Supper. So again, if you would just uh, talk to God and get things right with him.